Hey there. There's been a pretty important update to how Microsoft Entra Connect works with your on-prem environment. Entra Connect is the agent that is responsible for synchronizing users, groups, and devices from on-prem up to Microsoft 365 or Entra ID. Previously, this tool would use a service account with a stored password to authenticate to Entra ID, and this caused problems for organizations that use conditional access to enforce MFA on all users, because obviously this account can't use MFA when it's synchronizing in the background. The latest version now uses what they've called application-based authentication, and it's just an enterprise application using a single tenant configuration, and that will make the authentication process a whole load more secure. I've not configured this yet, but then you probably haven't subscribed to the channel yet, so we've both got work to do. Let's jump in and see how this looks. From the Enter Admin Center, we're going to go to Enter ID and scroll down to Enter Connect. I'm already here on this page. I'm going to choose Enter Connect Sync. And this says Enabled, and it's already there because actually it was before I changed my whole lab environment. In your case, it might already be enabled and you're going to be upgrading. But in this case, I'm actually starting completely fresh and I haven't configured it in this lab environment just yet. So what I'm going to do first is download the Enter Connect Sync application and I will choose agree to terms because I've already read them understand them they make sense let's wait for that to download and so all we need to do is just double click on Azure AD connect.msi and we'll install the application now I'm expecting this to have to create the enterprise application once we've got through to that stage let's see how different this is to the previous configurations we used to do for EnterConnect sync okay we will agree to license terms We've already done that we'll choose continue and uh, let's do customize because I want to see a bit more detail. I'm going to not change any of these though because I don't need to. We'll choose install and it's going to install the VC++ 2013 readist. Give that a few seconds. And the SQL Server Express local database and the synchronization service. So we're almost there. Okay, now we're at the user sign in screen. And this is where we need to specify the type of authentication that we expect users to use when we finish this configuration. Now we've got a choice of password hash, pass through, ADFS, ping federate, or do not configure. I would like to actually specify password hash because that's the preferred method. So that's where the hash of everyone's password is going to be sent up to the cloud. And Microsoft will use the hash value to decide whether they've typed the correct password. And that means we don't need any on-premises connectivity in order to get the applicate to get the users authenticated so i'm going to use password hash authentication and i'll choose next now i need to connect to enter id in order to get this up and running i've got a global admin so i'm going to go ahead and type that one in just log in here Okay, we're up and running. It is examining the domains and it's finished that now and it is at the stage of connecting the directory. This is the on-prem directory I need to connect. So it's the active directory we're gonna use and the forest is next coffee.lab and we'll choose add directory and we get the option of creating a new AD account to do the uh, AD forest synchronization and set everything up or we can use an existing. So if we already have an existing account to use then we can type that in but here I'm going to create an existing one by entering my enterprise admin username. So that's different to choosing use existing and specifying the username and password. Don't type in your enterprise admin username here because that would then use that for the synchronization. We don't want that. We want to use a new AD account. I'm going to type in my enterprise admin in order to create it. So next coffee slash administrator and the password. The password was incorrect. That's not going to help. I will try typing the password correct this time. That password is incorrect. I'll try again. Um, oh dear. Um, and it's now configured. So we've got nextcoffee.lab as the configured directory, and I'll choose next. And it says retrieving the schema. Now we we need to make sure that the UPN suffix, so the bit after 
the at symbol is available in the cloud and in the on-premises environment. Now, you can see that my AD UPN suffix here next coffee to Coda UK is verified in the cloud, but I haven't got a corresponding enter ID domain for my nextcoffee.lab. That's absolutely fine because there's no way I could own nextcoffee.lab. Maybe I could, but I don't think .lab is actually a, uh, a, a domain you can own. But it's unlikely that yours is something that you can actually own in the cloud. So this is absolutely fine. And that means I just need to choose continue without matching all UPN suffixes because there are some users in the environment with their username at nextcoffee.lab, which is fine and I'm happy with that. But there are most of my users, the three that I care about, are actually in this state here with nextcoffee.co.uk. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to head over to my domain control. You can see this user here, Adele Vance, has a UPN suffix in the account of nextcoffee.co.uk rather than nextcoffee.lab. Now, some of my admin accounts that I've got over here will, not that one, uh, anymore, yes. Some of my, my service accounts and admin account will have nextcoffee.lab because I don't want them to have nextcoffee.co.uk because they're not going to be logged into from the cloud. So that's absolutely fine to have. And it just means we need to tick this box before we can choose yes. So I'll take that and choose next. Now, I'm quite keen to sync everything because I want all of my users and devices to synchronize. But it is possible to select that. And then I can specify which OUs I want to to sync. So I'm going to untick this one here and go for my next coffee, which contains all of my admins, computers, groups, servers, service accounts, etc. And I'm going to untick. Actually, I'm going to go untick that and just do my users and computers for this demonstration. I'll choose next. So we need to uniquely identify the users. Now, if users are only represented once across all directories, then we don't need to synchronize them and match them up together. So for example, if all of your users currently are on premises and you're synchronizing them up to an empty cloud, then that's fine because you can just say they're represented only once in all directories. But in my case, I actually have an Adele Vance in the cloud and on premises. So I need to make sure that the identities are matched. And this says using the mail attribute. So let's see very quickly which mail attribute we have for Adele Vance. I'll just find the mail email. So we have Adele Vance, Adele V at nextcoffee.co.uk. I'll head over to my domain and just check email. There we go. Put that in there. Okay. So I'll do that for Alex as well. Obviously not Adele, but Alex W. And I'll also do it for Diego. Now, if you have um, more than three users, which you probably do, and therefore you need to fix all of them, there is something called ID Fix that you can download and do that across the board and actually just uh, fix the attributes for all of those users that you want to synchronize with. But in my case, very simple to do. I'm going to just use the mail attribute. Now we need to specify the source anchor. And this is a unique attribute uh, on each user that can't be changed once you've configured this. And it needs to stay the same over the lifetime of the user. So in this case, I can just let Azure ma manage or enter, manage the source anchor in this case. Um, and it says it's going to use the MSDS consistency GUID, and we'll write back that for the on-premises users. Sounds good. I'll choose next. And it says synchronize all users or devices, or we could specify that we're going to synchronize the selected group uh, in order to do kind of a pilot, uh, a pilot sync. But in my case, I've only got a few users. You might want to do all of them as well. But if you don't, you can just do a select group if you like. For me, I'm going to do all of them and choose next. Now we get to specify a few optional features. We have enter ID and app attribute filtering. We have password hash sync, which we've enabled. Password write back, where you can um, allow users in the cloud to make a change to the password on the, on the internet, and then actually write that back to the on-premises environment. 
that is quite a good idea to have enabled. Group right back as well as possible. Device right back where you could join a device to enter ID and write that back to the on-premises environment. Not a good idea uh, in most cases. And then directory extension attributes. I think I don't have any directory extensions that I'm using. So in this case, I'm going to choose next. And it's now configuring those components. As soon as I choose install, what I want to see is that it's going to make that change in Enter ID to use the on-premise to use the enterprise application for the on-premises sync. We we'll choose install. Okay, configuration complete. I'll choose exit. Okay, so we'll head over to Enter Connect and Connect Sync, and then you can see we're enabled. Our last sync was last was um, less than one hour ago. We're using password hash sync. Uh, but the whole point was that we were looking to see how this was doing the actual connectivity th and authentication. So let's head up to app registrations and see if we can find an app registration related to Connect Sync. There you go. Connect Sync provisioning CM01. That's the server I've used for the provisioning created today. And let's click into that. And yeah, there it is. So what we've configured, oh, it's using certificate based. Actually, that's quite important so good to know so pretty straightforward but i hope you found this useful anyway if you did you'll probably find that video useful too see you next time